Happy New Year. I'm the Reverend Rachel Hayes, Minister of the Unitarian Universalist Society of Amherst. I use she, her pronouns. Welcome to you, old friends and new, young and old. You are an essential part of our celebration today. Whether today is your first or your thousandth Sunday in our midst, we are stronger because you are with us. We are one people of many beliefs, many origins, sexualities, and genders. We are all growing, all learning, all loved. Just as you are, you are welcome here. Today's service is a meditation on change from the Unitarian Universalist Association with music from our own resilient congregation and a time of live joys and sorrows. Next Sunday, we'll be back to our usual multi-platform services in the sanctuary, as well as Zoom, with a service led by our own Emma Livingston. I'll be back in the pulpit on January 15th. I'm Jessica York your director of congregational life at the Unitarian Universalist Association here in my home in Birmingham, Alabama, the land of the Muscogee Creek people. Do you know how sometimes you will read or hear or experience a, a quote or a saying that just seems to stick with you? You carry it around with you in your mind thinking, hmm, I wonder if there's a message here for me. Well, someone recently shared a quote with me that has been sitting in my head ever since. It's from J.R.R. Tolkien's Fellowship of the Ring. Now the original quote includes ableist language. So I'm going to share the original quote to honor his words and then I will adapt it. Here is the original quote. It's a dangerous business, Frodo, going out of your door. You step into the road, and if you don't keep your feet, there is no knowing where you might be swept off to. Another way of saying that is, it's a dangerous business, Frodo, going out of your door. You move into the road, and if you don't stay grounded, there is no knowing where you may be swept off to. For those of you who may not be big Tolkien fans, Frodo is a hobbit. And in Tolkien's world, hobbits are being that like to stay close to home with the comfortable and the familiar. The thought of being swept off to who knows where is pretty terrifying to most hobbits. It can be pretty terrifying to us humans too. Change can be hard, even when it is welcome. And we are living in a time of great change. We don't know where all this will take us. We cannot know. But we do know that we need to open our door and move into the road. Life calls us forth from what may be our comfortable familiarity. There is just too much work needing to be done for us not to engage with the world. Dangerous as it may be. And so we do, 
We open our door and we venture out into the road, but we don't need to go alone. We have the means to stay grounded no matter how the wind blows. Your congregational life staff is one of those resources. Covenant is another. Covenant is something that is integral to Unitarian Universalist faith. The covenant that you make with each other to stay in faithful relationship in your congregation or your Unitarian Universalist community is one of those covenants. And the covenant that you make with your partner congregations in the association is another. During the pandemic, we have recognized how our covenants can give us a firm foundation to move forward together into whatever the future brings, wherever the wind blows. It is what calls us to come together in worship as we celebrate that which is of worth, both the old and the new. May it be so. We light this flame to invite a world of peace where we heal the wounds, where we share what we have with one another, where justice is another word for relationship, and we listen for what love has to say. We shall be known by the company we keep, by the ones who circle round to tend these bars. We shall be known by the ones who sow and reap the seeds of change alive from deep within the earth. Hello, Unitarian Universalists. I'm Susan Frederick Gray, president of your Unitarian Universalist Association, and it is my joy to be with you today. One of the gifts of these pandemic times has been the ways we have grown in our capacity to connect across congregations and across our association. Over five years ago, when I was elected president of the UUA, I knew there was no way I could visit every UU congregation as much as I would have liked to have done so. 
And yet through technology and being able to offer a message that any and all of our congregations can use, I am grateful to be able to connect in this way and share with you some of what I witness from my vantage point as I pay attention to our association as a whole and the dynamics of our changing world. For more than a year now, I have been talking about these times we are living in as liminal times. Liminal means a time in between, when what has been is no longer and what is ahead is still unclear. The pandemic upended so much of our lives, and yet what is next is still unfolding, still being imagined. I know that many of us are no strangers to this experience, and that for many of our congregations, we are experiencing layers of liminality, layers of transitions. I can relate as I finish my last year as your UUA president, and the UUA prepares to welcome our next president. The UUA president will be elected by delegates from our congregations this coming June at our General Assembly online and in Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania. I hope you will send your delegates. In addition to all of our own personal transitions, a number of our congregations are in various modes of change. Many are in ministerial search or hiring processes for other staff. Others are in their first year of welcoming new staff. You know, across our congregations, we are seeing a lot of staff transition and a shortage of interim ministers. Like a lot of caring professions, we have seen religious professionals leave their work, needing a break after what has been a grueling few years of both pastoral, prophetic, and technological demands. It has all been so much. It could be said that we're all learning to live and adapt in the in-between. We know from these last several years, both the challenge and the losses, as well as the creativity and possibility of these transitional times. And the lessons from these times are crucial to bring forward because in truth, there is still so much change happening and needed within and around all of us. This is certainly true in our congregations where the ways in which people connect to religious community have broadened and shifted and new patterns are still developing. And it's true in our country where we continue to witness systems and practices break down with devastating impacts. From healthcare and infrastructure to basic goods and services to the economy to democracy, our system has shown tremendous weakness weaknesses that impact the vulnerable most acutely. Human and civil rights are being rolled back at an alarming rate, and these fissures overall reflect a society that has put profit and power over people's lives. Now, in times of change and disruption, there is always a risk that fear and anxiety will dominate and lead people to cling more tightly to what has been, to a status quo that has never served the cause of human need, nor the values of justice and equity. But here's the thing. We are Unitarian Universalists. We are a people of faith. We are a people of hope and imagination. And I witness this in so many places across our faith, from congregations that continue to partner and share resources, to the energy and volunteers of You, You, The Vote, to our congregations, boldly sacrificing to support people in accessing reproductive care, and to all of our congregations celebrating and being a loving community for trans and non-binary children and youth and their families. And so, when so much is uncertain, it matters that we lean in even more to what we know to be true the life-saving message of our theology, and the life-affirming practices of the beloved community. So there is this wonderful parable from the late Danan Perry, a writer and humanitarian, that uses the metaphor of a trapeze artist to describe the experience of living in transition times. This is from the parable of the trapeze from Perry's book, Warriors of the Heart. He writes, most of the time, I spend my life hanging on for dear life to my trapeze bar of the moment. It carries me along at a certain steady rate of swing, and I have that feeling that I am in control of my life. But every once in a while, I see another trapeze bar swinging toward me. Each time it happens, I pray that I won't have to let go of my old bar completely before I grab the new one. But in my knowing place, 
I know that I must totally release my grasp on the old bar and for some moment in time must hurdle across space before I can grab on to the new bar. Each time, I'm filled with terror. It doesn't matter that in all my previous hurdles across the void of unknowing, I have always made it. Still, each time I'm afraid that I will miss, I do it anyway. Perhaps this is the essence of what the mystics call the faith experience. No guarantees, no net, no insurance policy, but you do it anyway because somehow to keep hanging on to that old bar is no longer on the list of alternatives. So for an eternity that can last a microsecond or a thousand lifetimes, I soar through the void of the past is gone, the future is not yet. It's called transition, and I've come to believe that this transition is the only place that real change occurs. And I mean real change, not the pseudo change that only lasts until the next time my old buttons get pushed. What a powerful metaphor that is about our lives today. And a reminder that real change, needed change, is possible, perhaps only possible in these transition times. Now, there's a few nuggets of wisdom in this story to really draw out. First, as Perry says, as much as we want to stay holding on to our current bar, it just doesn't work that way. We have to totally release our grasp on the old to make way for the new. And this is not easy. I want to be clear, for in times of change, there's a real tension between longing for what was, what we knew was stable, familiar, and meaningful, even if it was not that for everybody. And the opportunity to imagine something new, new forms, new practices, new possibilities in our lives and community. This is so relevant for our congregations today. The pandemic completely changed so much of congregational life and how we gather. And as we navigate what comes next, there's a real tension within many of our communities. Some of us know we can't go back. We know we need something different and we're ready and excited for that future. But we can also have anxiety and a desperate desire to know for sure what comes next. We want that certainty. Whereas others long for what was. Because we are all often attached to what has been familiar to us in our past. And so, so many people want that familiar congregational experience again. But the truth is both of these are seeking attachment when we are in the midst of transition. And being able to stay in the transition, growing more comfortable with being in that void and uncertainty is the place where growth really happens. And this means experimentation and creativity. And this can be challenging because we want to know what comes next before letting go of what we have always done. But we can spend all our time trying to answer questions we don't have answers to but we can just go for it and start experimenting with living our theology in ways that give us courage and resilience today. And this means bringing creativity and generosity and care to the children and youth and families that are in so in need because of this pandemic. And it means courage to answer the call to fully live in active solidarity with those who know how much is on the line and working to bring about more justice, equity, and compassion to fruition. Because here's the other gem in the parable. When the trapeze artist lets go of the bar, they do not free fall. There is momentum carrying them as it carries us all. And it's that fear of free fall that can keep us clinging to something that no longer works. But our connection, our shared history, our ancestors, our songs and readings and poetry, our spiritual imagination, all of these are momentum that propel us forward. We give each other courage. And the truth is we are not swinging on these bars alone. We are together in this moment and we will make mistakes and we will learn from them and we will learn to love again if we are willing to take a leap of faith. I want to acknowledge how embodied this metaphor of the trapeze artist is. But remember disabled acrobats and blind aerialists whose art and athleticism carries the same metaphors. There are many words I could use to describe the momentum that keeps propelling us in these liminal times, calling, mission, whatever it is that acts as a beacon that calls us forward, calls us towards what is most treasured in our faith. 
that calling of the beloved community. And when I speak of beloved community, I mean the description that Reverend Dr. Martin Luther King Jr. offers about a community that practices an all-inclusive, overflowing love that supports everyone's thriving and a love that cannot tolerate injustice, exploitation, discrimination, and poverty because of the damage these things do to human thriving. Denon Perry ends his parable with one final lesson. He writes, I have a sneaking suspicion that the transition zone is the only real thing and the bars are illusions. We dream up to avoid the void where the real change, the real growth occurs for us. Yes, with all the pain and fear and feelings of being out of control that can, but not necessarily accompany transitions, they are still the most alive, most growth-filled, passionate, expansive moments in our lives. Transforming our need to grab that new bar, it can be terrifying. It can also be enlightening in the true sense of the word. Hurtling through the void, we may just learn how to fly. Oh, I love that ending from Perry. And I want to use it to end with a charge for all of us. Yes, we have been in a time of change and uncertainty for years now. So many bars on which we relied just disappeared. And many of us know the deep pain of being forced into a transition that we never wanted. Naturally, within all of us, we want to get to that next bar, to be settled, to have the pandemic over, to have this transition time done, to be through the grief. However, as much as we all want to find that solidity, may we remember that as Perry offers, the bars are the illusion, and that transition is the only real time, and it's the most alive and growth-filled space and in that liminality, in that in-between, we may just learn to fly. Because in this world that is indeed at a threshold moment, we need religious communities that are living actively in this in-between time, willing to remain unsettled because so much is unsettled. Communities leaning into and reimagining what prophetic, life-saving, and justice-making ministry and community can be. Communities practicing a generosity of spirit, a generosity of care and belonging, of mutual support, to support one another in love in these times, and knowing faithfully that our values, our spiritual imagination, our interdependence will carry you, will carry all of us forward. May it be so. And I want to just end with a prayer. Spirit of life, we are mindful of all those who came before us. We are mindful and committed to all those who will come after us. Love, hold us fast to what is best and deepest in us. Hold us close to one another and to all that is our life. And may we keep true to all that calls us forward in love and in liberation. Blessed be and amen. In desperation we found freedom. In freedom we found
beloveds, do you remember roly polies? A roly poly is a small bug covered by a flexible shell that looks like armor. They're also known by other names like potato bug and wood shrimp. Roly polies roll up into a little ball to protect their soft underside, only displaying their hard shell. Times of change can make us want to roll up into a ball like a roly poly, believing we are protecting our soft underside. But when we do, we cannot stretch toward one another, together breaking the harmful systems and structures of oppression and prejudice that keep us apart. Focusing on our breath can help us remain open, quieting our nervous systems when they are affected by worry and stress and anxiety of change. I invite you into a brief practice of noticing your breath with me. Where you are, find your center, that core spot in your body where you feel balanced. Take a deep breath. And take another deep breath. And as you continue to breathe, notice your breath coming in and out of your body. Notice perhaps your chest rising and falling. your belly expanding and contracting. Return to your breath if you find your mind is wandering. Turn to breath. Return to your breath. Thank you. Your breath is always with you when you are with family and friends. When you are in worship on Sunday, in committee meetings, in the midst of change, return to your breath when you feel your anxiety and worry and stress rising. Breath. Breathe. I am Reverend Patrice Curtis, the Transformational Interim Ministries Director within UUA's Ministries and Faith Development Group. My ministries with interim and developmental ministers as they build belonging in our congregations during times of transitions. Held gently and roly poly will unfurl itself. May you feel held in love and compassion of our faith so that you feel open. And may you hold others so that they too may feel open and may you return to your breath in those times when you feel you want to curl up.
each week we join together in a practice of building a better world in community. We collect an offering and we split it with an outside organization to help us remember that we can't make the world a better place on our own. Half of the money supports the work and witness of our congregation. The other half of the money collected today will support Local Energy Advocates, or LEA. You'll hear more about LEA during next week's service, but the short version is that the money they receive from our offering will be spent on solar-assisted heat pumps for Habitat for Humanity houses right here in the Valley. We are honored to share January's offerings with local energy advocates for their Habitat heat pumps project. Please give generously today. In the basket, by text, by check, or through our website. Hello, I'm Maura. And I'm Riley. And we're going to sing Here Comes the Sun. extinguish this flame, but not the light of truth, the warmth of community, or the fire of commitment. These we carry in our hearts until we are together again. Who were we? 
Who are we? Who could we be? These are questions we have always asked. I'm Reverend Keith Cron, Director of the Ministerial Transitions Office for our Unitarian Universalist Association. And I know we have always wrestled with these questions, but some ways at now, at this moment, these questions are even more prevalent, more real, and more true. I watch us wrestle with these questions as we go through transitions, whether it be ministerial transitions or just the transitions of the world. These are good questions to be asking. We're also asking questions about what's left, what's possible, what is needed, what do individuals need, what do you need, what do our congregations need, and what do our communities need. Good questions. Questions Unitarian Universalist will now try and begin to work through and find answer for themselves. For those congregations in ministerial transitions, the office supports them as they go through this work, guided by the mission that the world simply needs more Unitarian Universalism at this moment. And how can we reach those who need us? We need good ministry, both from our ministers and from congregations. We need places where people can connect, be together, make a difference, find magic. The magic of life, of being together, of a work toward justice. This may be a time when our congregations are beginning to think about what their priorities are, and it may lead them to do less. That may be the future of many congregations, and it may be a very good one. Whatever stage of transition you are in, whatever your future might be, I hope and pray that what you do, you do well, that you find magic, that you make a difference, that you give the world a little more Unitarian Universalism in a world that needs it. Amen.